Hey everybody, Glen Monroe here, Roman Gnome. See, I got my, uh, you know, every cool outdoors guy has a weird hat. Got my cool hat on. And uh, we're out here in the, uh, well, I call it the honey hole. Where we go and forage for the uh, fungus, among us, right? And uh, this week, I had to write a few notes because, uh, you know, I'm not all that great with a few things. We're out here hunting for, uh, not even hunting, I came out here yesterday casually looking around and I ran into uh, several species of uh, funguses that I thought were really cool, you know, and it's called a chanterelle and we got a few. Um, some of them we were a little late, the animals got to it, the bugs got to it, and uh, here in Missouri we have a couple different species. We have a smooth chanterelle, we got the golden chanterelle, we got a cinnabar chanterelle, we got a black which is actually a, uh... anyway, we got a black chanterelle, we got a white milky, that's supposed to be peppery, and we got this blue violet, and uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to come out here and we're going to forge around, I'm going to go to the same spot I went yesterday and found some, and uh, we're going to go over a few things for some positive identification, and we're going to eat a couple of them, check them out, see if they're any good. And uh, hope like hell I don't go to the hospital from poisoning or anything. But uh, here in the Missouri, Ozarks, you know, right? God's Garden as we affectionately call it. There's plenty. There's plenty to eat and forage. And uh, so you're not going to struggle and suffer if you, if you just learn a few. Right? So I made it my point this year to learn at least 40 funguses I knew that were edible and friendly and weren't very complicated. Because I think people tend to shy away from funguses and things of that nature because well they're complicated due to well latin names and look-alikes some of the plants not really some of the funguses have look-alikes the ones that are edible no if you really just study them and just check them out and go with somebody that knows what they look like and you kind of point them out eventually you'll figure out that you really have to be not paying attention in order to get a look-alike okay they really don't look alike that much when you really start paying close attention and be mindful of what you're doing and the chanterelle has maybe a couple of look-alikes one of them is called a jack-o-lantern it glows in the dark and when you slice it it's yellow all the way through when you slice a chanterelle the ones that we're going after the golden or the uh, smooth or some of the other ones they're white inside so that's pretty easy Jack-o-lantern glows in the dark. Chanterelles don't glow in the dark. Okay, so that makes it pretty easy. And then there's another one that's called a full chanterelle. And I believe that's called a Hygrophoropsis orientiaca. <laughs> it's just called a false chanterelle. Pardon me. I'm out here in what's left of you know, the Ozarks, which is supposed to be conservation area. Do you hear that? That wasn't conservation. But anyway, the look-alike for the fall chanterelle is actually a bolete. It kind of looks like it, but not really. So, and I've I seen some photos of it. I'm like, nah, I can see how, but it looks more like a bolete. And I've got video footages of what boletes look like. They're very sturdy. They're funky looking. No, they, they're too rounded. These are more like flowers, okay? So you can't get these wrong. And the jack-o'-lanterns, they have gills on the underside of it. These look like flower petals, okay? That's pretty much it. So chanterelles you can't really go wrong with. Anyhow, we're going to go look for some. But like I said, I wrote down a few things, you know, for the ones that we're looking for. It smells like apricots, okay? Fresh smell, yellow inside stem. No! It's white on the inside. If it's yellow on the inside, it could be a jack-o'-lantern. But like I said, it has gills. No, these have little striations and, and things like that. So it has no gills, it has no scales, it has no rust. It looks like a flower. A nice, perfectly melted piece of wax or cheese. Okay? And that's pretty much it. And the family's called Cantharellius. So we have the smooth chanterelle, which is the Laterateus. We have the golden chanterelle, which is Siberius. 
And then we have a, I call it the Sherbert one, which is a little bit smaller and it's really orange. And that one's called the Cinnabarinus. Or we just call it the red chanterelle. You know, you just use your colors. Okay, and there's several of them, but here we're just going to be looking for the ones that I feel comfortable, right? I feel comfortable pursuing. And that would be just the normal ones. The smooth one like we got yesterday. Uh, I've got video footage I couldn't post today, but uh, I've got video footage of it. I'll have to edit it. I'm, you know, that good camera crew I got out here. So we're going to go continue on. And uh, I left some of them small, and we're going to see how large they got from, you know, each day. So that gives us an idea of if I see them growing, I'll come back, and that will give us, you know, hey, a window of expectancy. This is mid-July. It's been raining several inches for the last week, week and a half. We have major flooding here. The temperature is now climbing into the hundreds. As you can see, I am sweating. So without further ado, let's get on with it. We're gonna go see if we can find some more.